Wing, absolutely standard, nothing changed on the wing. I think the first place to go is to put the tip tanks on. The tip tanks, I like saying that, tip tanks. And uh, well, they go on like that, don't they? They just slide on like that so all I need to do is put some glue on it and stick them together the glue I shall be using for this is Yoohoo Paw so let's have a look they go like that there is even though this does have some under camber it is definitely a, a more of a over camber and I can't be bothered to strip, strip it off. They fit so tightly in, I don't think I need to strip off any paint. So I'm just gonna put some glue down inside. Let's do that for both of them. In fact, let's do one at a time. I put some glue inside, put the wing on, move it about a bit. Pull it off. There's those strings that Franka Tanker likes to talk about. I'll put a little bit more just on the end here, just to make sure. A little bit in that hole. Give it a little bit longer. Nice thing about you, who pause, you can use it like a contact adhesive. You can also just plonk it on and let it set let it set off which is pretty much what I'm going to do here so that's fully on that's fine that'll do and to be honest if they fall off at all I wonder if these holes make the whistle sound there's like holes molded inside I wonder if they help do like a little whistle sound oh sun's come out the weather lately has been absolutely atrocious. It's been no fun at all for flying. I haven't, I haven't flown a plane since the end of January when I flew my homemade wacky races Dick Dastardly plane. So I'm itching to fly again, literally itching. But in the meantime, I'm going to make certain everything is ready. Try and get as much building done while this weather is awful. And then have something ready to fly. Right, okay. Let's uh, get this on and in as far as it will go. The tip tanks are a very, they really do give it that, that shape. They should have a little fin here, a little sticky out fin here, but I, I can imagine if I'd made that, it would be so fragile, it would break off on the first landing, first bush it caught. So, that's that bit. Next bit will be the elevator. Let's put that aside to set off a little bit. Get my modified fuselage out. Now remember I modified this to support 4S. It's got, I've got a stabiliser here which does basically the same thing as uh, that very expensive receivers. It does uh, not only stabilise against winds but also stabilise, oh, uh, level off so it's got an oops. I've got that fed by a receiver that feeds S-Bus into here 
and this drives the uh, servos. That's fairly simple. Replace the ESC with a 40 amp one because I don't trust a 30 amp. And if I push the plane or 4S, I'm pushing 34 amps. And that's to me that that's you know just taking the Mickey. And I've also added I've also added rudder because why not? This plane deserves a rudder. That's a rudder cut in. I've, I don't know if it's going to be big enough, but it's cut into the scale size. This is where the rudder goes on the real one. It's quite chunky, this foam. It's not thin. So let's, let's do this. <clears throat> Bit of this around the top surface. I do like the way they don't put paint on this section. Yeah, it does cover so. I'm not going to put too much. It doesn't need too much. I'm not bother scratching up. This is this fits quite tightly anyway. So put a bead around there and a bit on the top. There's everywhere every mating surface now has a bit of glue. Not a lot. Let's push this in. And hopefully I didn't get any on the rudder. What I can do there is just... Uh, just drive the rudder over so it, it can't stick. And if it wanted to. Should be. I'm not going to bother taking it out, pushing it back in, all that palaver. That's in place. At this point, because I've done all the work on making the modifications that I wanted, it really is a matter of just sort of gluing and screwing. I do like the way they give you an extra screw. You know, it, it takes four screws to uh, join the wing to the fuselage, so they give you five in case you lose one. Nice touch. Screws up. I'm not gonna, I'm thinking about gluing the wing in, but I'm not going to. It hasn't been needed on the Arrows uh, Viper that I've put to 4S. It hasn't shown any uh, tendency, it hasn't shown any tendency to fall off or show stress. So I'm going to go with that's how it is. Right, good little tip. Just a, a pillow. Makes for a very good little protective stand. So I'll just pump that there while I lose my screws. I'm doing well here. It's, it's a good job they give you five screws because I've already lost one. <laughs> Well, I've got four screws, that's enough. The only thing you've got to do with this wing is because... because it has uh, a Y lead. It has a Y lead here for the uh, ailerons. You need to feed that Y lead through. And they give you a nice hole and it's got a slot for the wedge to go into. I can see even a bad landing that wedge breaking but if it saves the, the model from further damage that's fine by me. It's an easy fix. Let's just push this in. Oh, my filming equipment is getting in the way of building. Yeah. There we go. That's in place and it feeds nicely. I will find that there it is, number five. They're quite tiny screws, so I'm going to use a precision screwdriver set. Find the right connection. This one looks okay. I 
and the thing is not to uh, not to try and put them all the way through first time is to actually find the slot find the hole they're supposed to go into and just just notch it in it's always going to be a bit fiddly the first time if you do a reverse if you turn it on reverse you actually can feel when they find the hole so that one's starting to take and this is a little bit magnetic which is brilliant again doing the reverse first try and find that hole mm, it's not finding it at the moment there we go found it you can actually feel it when it catches because I said that I said that I don't think it has I think there's plenty of reviewers of this model found that these screws are a bit fiddly. And they don't always line up properly. I'll leave that till after. Let's do the front ones. At least I'll have a stable connection then. We can work from there, can't we? Do the reverse. Try and find a hole. It feels like it's found something. Mm, not convinced on that one either. Just dropped a screw. Thank you, Arrows, for giving me a spare. No, nope, these are not wanting to go in. Ah. That seems to have found purchase. Let's try this side. No, nope, not convinced. Well, I'm not going to film. And uh, I'm not going to film this. I'll just get it done off camera. That was a struggle. I agree with everybody who's, who's used this model. The, the holes that the screws go into don't line up horizontally. You literally have to push the wing over, connect it, and then push the wing over the other side, get a little bit of screw in, and then you can, then you can get working on it. But uh, no, not as easy as it should be. All right, so let's just... Uh, Tidy up these wires, this is the aileron, so the aileron goes into this socket here. This is why I hadn't glued this down, uh, stuck this down using the pad. Because I need to tidy up these wires first. And that should be fine. That will sit there, They're not in the way of the rudder or elevator servos. I've got my the active part of the signal wires both horizontal here and vertical here so I should have a decent connection and that that's well out of the way of where the battery is going to be so I'm ready to pull off this tape. This is the sticky pad that's supplied with this stabilizer by Radio Link. I've never used one of these before, but it does look interesting and it does seem to do everything I'd want it to do, which is nice. I'm just going to use the edge of it just to pull the backing off, edge of a sharp blade. I find that works best. And then you can get in, pull that off, and now position this. And like all these pads, you want to really sort of position it first time in the right place. The radio link says that it must point forwards, and it must be this way up. It doesn't have a lot of choice on positioning. This must be the front. The connections must go to the back, which is annoying. I would prefer them to the front. 
obviously for connection wise and uh, it can't be turned over can't be on its side can't be turned over so that's actually only just on there I would like to move that back what I'm going to do I think is just put a little little bit under there just to stop that tipping but for the moment that should be fine right next point where's the CG on this the C of G so 60 or 70 from where from the beginning of the wing here okay I'm not too fussed about this I just tend to uh, roughly mark it you can normally tell if a plane is wildly tail heavy or wildly nose heavy just from when you pick it up so using my extremely big uh, 60 from the front there is there and 70 for the front is there okay so it's about a centimeter from behind that line okay that's fine so centimeter from behind that line that's the 60 and then another centimeter that's the 70 fine I don't like putting big marks on my planes, if I can help it. Funfly 4S1300. These are allegedly 100C batteries. They, I've never had them puff. They're really tough. They're made for quadcopters, but for these smaller planes, they're absolutely perfect. I have these in 1550 for, for my quads in 4S when I fly 4S. So let's just plonk that down there and see where it takes us. And then once I've found the right mark, I'll just, I oh, don't like this battery strap. It's one of these ones I, I abhor. I might change the battery strap for something else. Anyway, let's plonk it down there and see, get a first impression. going to turn it upside down check that that is pretty much spot on that's perfect that will work so if I just make a little mark there it means I can probably put a 2200 4S in that's the 1300 4S And I find on the Viper, Alpha, the Arrows Viper, when I'm flying 4S, I get three and a half good solid flying minutes of hooliganism. So 1.3 uh, amp hour. Just writing that down in there. 1.3 amp hour. So I know where the line is. I need to connect these tail planes. And... Uh, for that it's nice that they come with like the little silicon tubing to hold the, hold the connectors on it I appreciate that I need to connect the radio and, and the power so uh, so I know that the servos are, are centered and, and not going to cause problems right so I'm going to do that once it's all done I'll come back and just give it a quick test for you okay that's all set up now the nice thing about the elevators because you've got the adjustment here all you have to do is just slacken that off get the elevator straight once you've connected the horns like that there's horns there and put the strips on you don't have to worry about twisting them all you do is just get the elevator straight and then tighten that up when it's in the right position. So, I now have rudder, uh, ailerons, I should say. This is on maximum throws. So. 
elevator. Why have I got no elevator? I should have elevator. There we go. So I've got elevator and rudder. The rudder's pushing through quite a lot, so it tends to creep, which is why I picked a more powerful uh, servo than I did on the arrows. It was a more tortuous route. So this manual, this is what they Horizon Hobby called AS3X. And this is, as you can see, the surface is going up and staying up. This is safe what they call safe mode and if I turn it upside down that's typical of safe it will try and correct now the way to check on this is put it on safe lift it up if you lift it up the elevator tail up the elevator should go down slightly and I can feel that if you move to the left if I move to the left, that's actually opposite. That's not doing what I want on the rudder. It should go towards the direction. And if you lift this wing, it should go up on the ailerons. It does. So what I've got is I've got to reverse the rudder. Now I need to look into the instructions on how to do that. But it's it's a matter of pressing but there's a little button on the front of the front of this let me just check that elevator yeah the elevator's going right you can see it lifted up when I lift the tail so it's going to try and push that tail down but the rudder is opposite I'll get some weird things going on with that so I need to check the instructions which are online at radio radio link on how to reverse the rudder correction but everything else seems to be working right now let me just check that rudder for manual. That is correct. Elevator is correct. And aileron is correct. So I don't want to reverse in the settings. I need to reverse the correction. And there we are. This is uh, now running. And I've got a fog. And I can uh, give you a quick blast. Next thing's for the maiden, just need the weather better. <laughs>